Hey guys, it's Katie. So we're going to be working with all of these translucent canes I made. And this is the whole point of these translucent canes, this project. So with all of these canes, I'm going to be cutting slices. Now I'm going to be using my Lucy Clay slicer to try to get as even of slices as I can. So I want to try to show this to you, even though it's really hard. So the Lucy Clay slicer no longer, this is the big one. And from the reviews I asked in different groups, the little mini slicer does not work very well. The blade comes down at like an angle like this. So it will squish more the pieces that are closer to your angle. Um, this one comes down like a guillotine. Now, if you're good at slicing clay, awesome. Just slice it by hand. The other thing is it no longer has the mat here that tells you how thick you're going, which is stupid, I think. So what I've done is I put an arrow for forward and an arrow for back going that way. You can't really see it. So I know which way is forward and which way is back. The other thing is, is I've marked on my thing a mark, and that gives me one full turn. And then I also put in different color permanent markers, I don't know if you can see it, um, a quarter turn. I've kind of guesstimated. So if I want to go thinner. So I know if I turn this all the way around once to get to the blue mark, I've gone one full turn, and that gives me a slice about that thick. So I'm going to be slicing all of these canes that I have from the last few uh, projects. So I just put it one on there and I need to get it up to the blade so I can get one first slice, which may not be even. And then... And the second slice isn't perfect either, usually. Now you do want to... Ideally, on a round cane, you would want to rotate it every time, but I find if I take it off that mat and I rotate it, it then I have to have one bad slice before I get a good slice. So, ooh, my washer's on even up there. Ooh, it doesn't sound good. It'll, it's a self-leveling washer, so a level. So anyways, I'm going to be cutting a bunch of slices from all of these canes and just laying them out. I'm going to do the flower cane we just made. I'm going to do all of these bullseyes, modified bullseyes, jelly roll, all of it. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of them up and then have them ready off to the side. Now I made most of these canes a couple days ago, so they are a little cooler. Now ideally, you know, you can warm them up like in your hands for a second to get them ready to go. This one's a little thicker because I just did just rotate it on the board, but it's still more even than I would be able to get with my hands. And I'm doing a full turn. So we're going to make a veneer, we're going to make a sheet and cut some slices out of that. So I'm going to cut some of each. You know, however many you want to do of each. And then where it's getting flat, I'm just kind of rounding it off a little bit. But either way, we're going to be messing with this anyways. So, so yeah, just cut your slices up and, and uh, get all your canes sliced up. And, you know, the reason why, like this one the other day, I didn't reduce it all the way is because when I go to make the flour, I can reduce it and get it all warmed back up. If it's to your perfect size, then it's harder to uh, get them all warmed up. So let me cut a bunch of slices. I'll set them aside on tiles of all of those canes we just made or, you know, the different bullseyes, the jelly rolls, the flour as well. I'm going to cut a striped cane, all kinds of things, and just have a bunch of different translucent canes and get them ready. Okay, so I have all my slices cut. And now what we're going to lay them on, I'm questioning what to do. So either I have, I have a Prima White Pearl rolled out here on my thickest setting. Now there's a couple ways I can go about doing this. I was thinking either I could dye this itself, the pearl, the white pearl, with alcohol inks. Because I want it to be shiny under the cane slices. Or I could put silver metal leaf and then put alcohol inks on that. Or I have all these different colors of metal leaf and these are on my Amazon page that I could lay on all these different colors and then not use alcohol inks. So I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. 
I'm trying to decide, do I use all the colored ones and just lay on different pieces of the colored leaf, the metal leaf, and not use alcohol inks at all? Or do I just use silver and then use alcohol inks? Don't really know. I'm thinking most of you will probably have silver leaf, metal leaf. So I'm thinking I might just do silver leaf and then put alcohol inks on top of that because not a lot of people have all these different colors of silver leaf. So maybe we'll just do that. So let me grab a sheet of this. Oop, I'm ripping it. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna put alcohol inks on it. And we're gonna put the cane slices on top of that. And then the, the pearl clay will also be shimmery if it does show a little bit. Maybe something like that. Maybe I should get another little piece right down here. Just in case I put slices there. Just like that. Okay, let me pick this up quick. Metal leaf gets freaking everywhere. Like, all over you. It's crazy. I like the metal foils, but I don't have tons of them, so because they don't crackle as much, the foils. I really like the like the Lisa Pavelka foils. You just gotta burnish them on really well. Before you pull the clear backing on. If you don't burnish it with the friction, then it won't stick. But they don't crackle like leaf does. So I'm gonna grab my alcohol inks. And I have all kinds of alcohol inks, but I think I'm gonna use some of the pearl ones I have. <clears throat> so let's see so I have a whole bunch of pearls this is um, the ranger pearl one this is enchanted so like a bright pinky color let's see this is a uh, deception it's like a red this is envy these are all the pearls I got them in a set um, we have celestial but that's kind of a matted matte blue I want a brighter blue this one tranquil um, they have different purples Oh, they have a yellow. I'm going to have to shake them up really, really well. That's a better green. Sublime. I think I'm going to use that one. Let's see. Any of my other... I feel like I had another pink one somewhere. But they don't have to be pearls. I just have them, so I'm going to use them. But they don't have to be the pearl ones. Because we have the silver. I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, Intrigue. And those are all the ones. Oh, there's a orange Splendor. Then... I do have like the mixatives, like the silver mixative, and oh, this is a pretty one, Smolder. But I don't think I want to use that in this. They also have this mineral color. So I don't know. Let me mix these up really well, and then we'll start dipping them on here. Okay, you really got to mix those up well so it's all in there. So I think I want to start with this enchanted color. And ideally, yes, you would wear gloves. Let me take a Q-tip and kind of see, maybe if I put on a pair of gloves, I can spread it without soaking it up. Because the Q-tip kind of soaks it up, not just spreads it around. Oh, 
I'm just looking for a little color on the foil. And then, okay, so that was Enchanted. Let's see, I wanna go brighter, I think. Let's try some of this Intrigue. I'm not cutting off my scraps because I'll save those scraps. We've used metal foil and translucent clays before, but this will just dye the purple a little bit, or the uh, white pearl. <clears throat> I want more of this enchanted, I think. I don't know. I've never done this before, so I'm trying it. some of this blue color tranquil <clears throat> I don't want to make a whole bunch of purple that's the thing See the mica shimmering when I first put them on there. Look up at the top where it's mixing in with the pink. You can see them shimmering. Okay. And then maybe a couple, try a couple spots of orange, but I don't really want them to mix too, too much. This is a uh, Splendor. Especially like with the blue, it will not make a good color. Okay, good enough. That's enough orange. Maybe a little bit of this yellow. Alchemy. That should make an orange when it mixes with the pink and a green when it mixes with the blue. So I probably don't need a separate it's okay if I don't have all the silver color covered I try to get a little bit more of this first one I really like that So now we just gotta let this dry for a sec. And then that's what we're gonna end up laying our slices on in a few minutes. But we gotta get our slices, that veneer ready to actually lay it on there. So the other thing you're gonna need are some kind of circle cutters, some like Kemper cutters that are about the size of your slices. If anything, a little smaller. So I have this one that's about the size of my big sizes. And then I have this one that's about the size of my, my littlest one, okay? So I'm gonna use these. And this is how we're gonna begin this veneer. So the other day we made a, a, a pendant where we laid on the bullseye one, where we laid a bullseye one together um, and we had gaps in between. So I'm gonna try to keep gaps out of this. So we're just gonna start off by taking our slices and then we're gonna decide which one's gonna go next to it. So we're using pretty much all of the ones in the translucent cane video that I made and the video for the translucent flower. So this one, I don't know if you can see it, um, baked turns out like this. So this is a small one, so I'm going to cut a piece out of this guy. And we're going to set that in there. So this will disrupt the circles, but like in that pendant the other day, I wanted solid circles in this. I want to kind of merge it all together. 
And this is similar to what exactly we did in that brown pendant. So let's then put maybe one of these next to it. Now I need something a little bigger. So I might need one smaller than this. Okay, let me use my biggest circle is the flower. You guys see that? Let me get one a little smaller than that one. Yep. You see how we're merging them all together? It'd be nice if you had a thick layer of translucent around all of these canes, but I didn't think of that to begin with. So, like when I made this one, I should have had an outer layer of translucent, but I didn't think about that. So let's see, where am I going to stick this one? Somewhere over here. Like that. And just slide it in to fit. And if you have a bad part of the cane, we'll cut that part off. Let's see if I can get this one to fit in there. I'm going to put it in. <clears throat> I have not used bullseye yet. Maybe another little one. little cutter. Let me see. Somewhere in here. Might need to slay some more little ones. Kind of cool looking, huh? We're going to lay that on that veneer. And I know with the Cernet translucent white, it's hard for you to see, but we're using when it goes translucent we're using all of these canes right now plus the bullseye canes so we're using all of these right now plus the bullseye canes um, that we made on that pendant that one of them didn't work out but we're using um, these ones too not the smaller ones but the bigger ones okay so we're using all of these canes right now Okay, let's keep going. So let's see, what do I want to put over here? Maybe just a plain bullseye. Something like that. Let's... See if it will fit. No, I need the larger one. Like that. And so I'm just going to keep putting them in a random pattern all the way around in here until I get a nice sheet or as many as I have cut. And um, then we'll go from there. And I also want to take some straights. I don't know how I'm going to fit some straight ones in here. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll just cut circles out of these. Some small. Because I don't have very many small ones of these. Maybe I'll just cut some. out of the straight like that hmm. I have to decide where to put it every time that's the thing A little small. Yeah, that look cool there. Let's see. I think I could probably do another one of my flowers. Now I only cut slices of my big flower, but I definitely could 
cut, I reduced them down in that video to smaller. We could do smaller ones. Let's put that flower maybe here. So start smaller with your circles and you can always go up to a bigger size if you can't get it to fit in. See, like that one's tight, so now I'll go up to the bigger size. Get it to fit in there. But you're better off starting a little smaller than a little than bigger. You can always like butt your make your edges butt up against each other a little better with a little tool. I think that's gonna be cool looking. I might even take two slices of the stacks and make of the striped cane and make a big circle out of it. If I can. them to stick together a little bit. Make a bigger circle out of it. I really like those stripes. I think they're pretty. Where do we want to stick that? I got one there. Maybe up here somewhere? And then do we want to go that way? Or do we want to go that way? I think this looks cool. This is going to be fun. Definitely a fun and playful one. Okay, maybe a little striped one. No, I got too many. So let's see. Jelly roll, bullseye. I think we need a bullseye up here somewhere. And I have two sizes of the bullseyes. Let's stick one maybe here. I have one that has a white outline. I have one that's just with translucent. This one that's white. Now I didn't purposely reduce these canes into these sizes, I just found a cutter that's about those sizes. <clears throat> I need to make it a size of a pendant so I can cut a pendant out of it. And then what if we stick one of those bullseyes down here? on the edges. I want it kind of in the middle. Like that. I'm just slightly pushing the seams together. something right there. Let's do my skinny jelly roll. It's hard because actually I have one of these little ones so I don't eat up my whole stripes. I like the striped ones. Now 
Now that is about the size of a pendant right there. Let me get a cutter. So I think I want to make two out of this. Hmm. What cutter shape do I want to use though? Ooh, I have this one. This is a new one I haven't used yet from Metal Clay Studio. Ooh, I had a piece of dog hair on it, didn't I? So honestly, I think I should make this sheet bigger so I can cut two because once I cut into that metal leaf, it's going to crackle. If I don't have a layer on top of it. but So we're going to need it about the size of our cutter. So I can kind of guesstimate. It's kind of big. That's my next. I have two inch and two and a half inch. In these I had him give me two different sizes so I think one of them is gonna be that shape one of them let's see oh I also have the puffy triangle the hard thing is, is I had him do two different sizes but this is one and a half inch and this is two inches like why the hell does it look so so much bigger do I want to wear a pendant that size? Or do I want it more that size? I don't know. Maybe I won't use that one for this. This is a good one, too. That's a good one. So I'll need a sheet. I'll need to make the sheet twice as wide. About This fits one, so if I keep going on with this, I think that will be perfect to cut two out of this. So I'm going to keep building on this the same way I just have been until I can fit two cutters side by side on it. These are very similar shapes, but so until I can fit two cutters and then I'll be back. I'm going to try to figure out how to stick this flat sheet in here. So I just took a cutter the size of this one and cut the end off. So I'm trying to mimic this shape. And then I'm going to take this round, this the size of this one, and kind of fit it in there a little bit. I wonder if I can get this down in here. That also has kind of a flat. I'm just trying something. I don't know if I can make it work without... I could pick the whole veneer up and... lay it on top and then cut the shape out. I want to see if I can... fit that down in there a little bit. did it. Not perfect, but it's in there. Hmm, okay. Well, it's kind of different. And I'm getting stuff on top of it, yes, but when I sand it, hopefully all these little flicks will come out. And I may take a needle later and try to, you know, get anything out of here that I can deal with it when I'm done making this veneer. I just wanted to show you that I tried to get that down in there a little bit. Cool. I'm going to keep going. I do think I'm actually going to stop here because I need to cut more cane slices before I have enough to make two. So the next thing I want to do is take a piece of um, parchment paper or plain paper, something to flatten this out. 
So I'm going to burnish it now while it's on my table, just a little bit. And now, because I cut them all pretty much the same thickness with the cane slicer, I should be able to burnish fairly well without distorting things too much because they're all about the same height. I'm just going to burnish them a little bit so I don't... So they're stuck together. Okay. And then... At this point, if you want to take some alcohol to the top just to clean off any spots you may have, you can do that. So we're going to pick this up. Well, first, let me cut this in half, I think. So I'm just literally going to cut it in half. Enough for a cane slice or um, a pendant. To fit on here. And before I even pick it up, I am going to lay this on it and cut it on here. But then off camera, I'm going to do a second one. I'm just picking it up off my thing as easy as I can because it's not very thick. Oh, it's separated. Damn it. Right there, I didn't burnish it well enough. Hang on. Gotta, you gotta burnish the ends too. We always do the middle well, but then we don't do the ends well enough. Or I don't. Okay, let me pick that up again. Now this is really thin, so this is why I didn't want to do this the other day. Let's see, what side is cleaner? But at least on this side, when I sand it, I can get all these little dust flicks off if they're underneath in the translucent spots I won't be able to get ah, let's just lay it on here and I don't care if I go just on the plain pearl clay that's not really let me just see here Now, I don't know how well this stuff's going to stick to this metal leaf, because usually the clay doesn't stick to the metal leaf very well either. So I may have just wanted to dye. It might have just been a good idea just to dye the pearl, or the, the Primo White Pearl. Might have been a better idea just to do that. Okay, now let's burnish this onto here. Make sure it's really stuck down as good as it can be. No air trapped between it. Just looking at it from different angles.
Okay, now that this one is cut, I'm going to pick this one up and put it on a separate tile and then go bake it and see what it looks like. And I'll make another sheet while this is baking. I'll just bake it for a half hour just so we can take a peek at it. I usually don't like to pick up my pendants after I've cut them up, but I don't want to pick that up either because it'll crackle more. And I'm hoping it doesn't separate from the metal leaf. That's what I'm hoping. So if not, I think what I'm going to do for the second one, so I don't have two mistakes if this doesn't work, because I'm afraid the metal leaf will separate. It sticks to the metal leaf, but clay doesn't stick to it well. You know what I mean? Not always. So I think what I'm going to do with this one is bake it. This one I think I'm going to mix up this white pearl. I really like the way it looks though. I'm going to mix up this white pearl in the leaf and get it all mixed in. Just in case. And then, or even use these scraps here. Okay. I'll use all of this and get it all mixed together. And, um... Let me do that fast, hang on. Okay, so I have it mixed up a little bit, enough. Enough to get that all in there. The uh, metal. Okay, it's all in there. And then I think what I'm gonna do with this is put alcohol inks right on top of the white pearl. Because I'm afraid when I drill the hole on this other one that it's going to separate. I've had that happen before. So I want to try both ways. So with this one, we'll do the same thing with the pearl, uh, dropping stuff, with the pearl alcohol inks. Let me get my glove back on. <clears throat> we'll put some more pearls on it. And let's see what works better. The only way you're going to know is if you try. I really like this color. I really, really like this color. Oh. It's so vibrant. Right now, this is just alcohol ink on plain clay. Napkin. Uh, some of the blue. And if we put yellow on that, we'll get green and orange. And blue, if it mixes with the pink, will give us purple, so... Really just three colors. There's a the yellow. <clears throat> that mica in there settles really, really quickly to the bottom. Do whatever colors you want. And I also think I need some of this intrigue in there. Just a little bit of it. I'm going to let that dry. I'll make a veneer for that. In the meantime, I'll get the other one baking. I'll just bake it for a half hour. 
then we can take a peek at it. Or maybe I'll just put it in for the full hour. I mean, it's going to need a full hour bake. But I don't know if I'm going to want to side it. So let me just put a half hour. Because I may want to put... Smear something on the side or do something with the sides. Oh, oh Katie. Get in there in your perfect spot. Good thing the jump ring's gonna go there. See, that's what I'm afraid is gonna happen. It's gonna separate from the foil. That's why we may need to smear the side to give it some support, something to lock it on. So yeah, let me bake it so I stop touching it. And then I'll make a veneer to put on this one. I have my new veneer that should be big enough to fit this. Now, upstairs when I took a peek in the oven, it is really, really light, like Easter colors light. So I just took some black and some of the darker colors and made a mess on here. So that I'm going to put it on this one. And remember, this has no um, foil on, no foil layer, just clay and alcohol. So start smoothing it on there, pushing all the air out from underneath. that on there. Uh oh, there's yellow alcohol ink. Hang on. On that foil. Or on that uh, thing. I gotta wipe that off. Quickly. Somehow I got a little alcohol ink on my parchment, so. Burnish this down really well because you don't want any air trapped between your base colors and your cane slices because you want to get it as see-through as you possibly can and if there's an air pocket in there it won't be as see-through as you want. And also we're going to, or I'm going to sand this to try to get them even thinner. I'm baking them for a full hour at the recommended temperature. The other thing I want to point out, try to get where your hole is going to be drilled on a solid piece and hopefully not on a seam. So let me just take a peek where I'm going to drill my hole. I want to get that stripe at the top if I can. Looks pretty good. Get ready. Cut this guy out. Make sure it's cut out really good. And let's peel this off. I like to peel it off before I remove my cutter, but sometimes it doesn't always work. Okay, so I'm going to bake that again for an hour. And again, we may do something with the sides. I may sand it and see how it looks, and then I may smear it. I don't know. We'll see what the sides look like when we get there. Okay, for an hour. And then all these translucent scraps, um, 
you can just wrap any junk cuts around a, a block of clay and try to get a bead out of it. Um, these I usually put in a bag with translucent and white mix and that way it'll just be a not such opaque white especially if you add a little more white to it um, the white will eat up the translucent so in my lace cane that I made last summer I used these kind of scraps for that and it just wasn't as opaque of a white when you mix it all up so keep those and then these I'll mix up and see what happens with those as I'm mixing it up, you know what this looks like down in there? Can you see it down in there? It looks like a slide that I used to look at in Anatomy and Physiology 1 or 2. All those striations, like of muscle or connective tissue or blood or whatever. <laughs> That's what that just reminded me of. So this one's out of the oven. See what I mean? It was super bright. Super bright. So, you know, we got to trim the edges, sand it, and everything. I'm going to let it finish cooling because it's still warm. I'll wait for the other one to get out of the oven, too, and I'll sand these and make it a little bit thinner. So you can't really see the metallic underneath. It definitely didn't, mm, didn't make it that shiny under there. But if I sand it down a little thinner, it might because it is quite a thick layer. So we'll see. But now you can see all those canes I've been laying on. I really like it. I think it's super cool. And we'll see what the other one looks like too when it goes translucent. I really love the Cernet translucent. It's not yellow at all. It's a really white translucent. Okay, let me let that cool. Wait for the other one to come out. Oh, this is what this mixed up as. So the alcohol inks did dye the metal leaf. You can see blue flecks and orange and pink and but the ink that I just put on the clay tinted the clay. So that's a clay I'll keep and uh, put in my spare box and I'll use later. Okay, when that's out of the oven, I'll probably sand them off camera because again, I've shown you in many ones. So um, 600, no, 400, 600, 800, up to 1,000, sand and buff. And then we'll see. I don't want to sand through them, just to them. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a siding yet, but I think I do need to just to make sure it's secure. That would probably be ugly. Probably a white or something. I don't know if a black would look good to kind of frame it. I may do a smear. Or I may resin it just to fill in the spots. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. We'll think about it. And this one's still cooling off, so it's still getting a little more clear. When it comes out of the oven, it's still a little foggy, like down here. But the more it cools, the clearer it gets. So I'm going to sand these up. I just wanted to show you it before I sanded anything up. I wonder if I dip it in some water. If it'll go even a little more clear quicker. Like that. That's what the back looks like. So I'm going to sand these up and I will be right back. So let me show you them now that they're sanded and buffed. And I think you can tell under here, not a huge amount, so that will be up to you whether you want to use it or not. In real life, I can tell there's metallics, like right here, can you see it? You can tell that's metallic under there. Same as in real life down here, you can tell there's metallic under it. And in the yellows, like you can actually see it in real life. Like there is metallic glittering under there. Um, but I don't know if it's worth it to use it. Now I could try to sand them a little thinner to see if I can get more showing through. But I'm okay with that. I don't want to go too thin because I'm afraid to go through. Also, I didn't do anything to the sides. I just trimmed them a little bit. And I'm okay with them looking like this. I'm pretty fine with that so I'm gonna leave the sides backs I just did a quick sand and buff you know I could get it more you could see that the dyed foil down in there um, but I'm okay with them looking like that these are just for me again so I don't need to get too fancy now either of these I think initially you think to hang them with the small point but they both could be hung the opposite way they both could be hung with the small point down so so all I have to do now is resin 
And then um, we'll do our bail and our jump ring. And last week I so showed you all my sanding and buffing. Um, or the last pendant. I think it was this one. So, you know, I think that will be fine. And I also showed how to put a jump ring. So I, I don't know. Let me get it resin and I'll be right back. While I'm waiting for those in the um, light, I'm going to take the rest of these slices that I have. And I have this, I think I did this with a snowflake pendant. I had this left over. And I'm going to make, usually I'll make a lentil bead with my scraps and then um, keep it as a backing. So I'll just take all of these and lay it on till this blue is covered. Let's see, do I have any more pieces? I have a little piece of stripe here. Doesn't need to be perfect, not by any means. And oh, here's a half a circle. Um, One. So you're not good slices. Definitely always keep them. Always. Let's see. I always use these as my backings, like all this kind of stuff. Well, when I need a backing. Roll it up in your hand. Just to get it all smooth again. Like that. And then pick a part you like and we'll begin swirling it. Oh, maybe there. We can swirl multiple parts. We don't just have to swirl one area. So take a something flat. Clearer is easier because you can see what's going on. But just start swirling. Going in one direction with a clear block. And there are videos on lentil beads. I prefer lentil beads over Natasha beads. I just, for some reason, don't like most of them. So with my scraps, I tend to make lentils, flatten them out, and then that's what I use for um, different backings when I need them. Let's see what we get out of this. Now it may not swirl a lot because that top right there is a solid piece, but there was a solid piece of clay, but it looks like it is swirling it. It's getting so wonky. It's, it's weird because off camera, mine don't get wonky. On camera, they get wonky. Ooh, I got something on my clay there. There's something on this. It's okay, I can wipe it off with alcohol. And my cord, my phone is charging and the cord's in my way. My arm's coming from way over here because it's going around my cord. Probably should have wiped this block off. It's been sitting on my desk for a couple of weeks. Or since the last time I used it. I had something dirty on it, but I can wipe this off with alcohol. There we go. Sometimes the slower I go, the more I feel like it does swirl. The faster I feel like I don't put as much pressure so it takes longer to swirl. I definitely got something on there that I'll have to... Yeah, it's something on here. I'll have to wipe off with some alcohol. So I'll swirl it in multiple areas, so make it back into a ball, 
and then swirl it at another spot and you can get like really cool different areas of swirls and they just make neat kind of backings and I keep them in a sheet protector now someone asked me what brand I have a no name brand sheet protectors I got on Amazon and I did test them out with clay before I put my clay in them I've had them for a while for school when I was in college so um, it's not like I bought them just for that it was just I had them there must be still something on this acrylic block you see how every time I use it it gets dirty but it's like I can't see it on here I don't see anything on here but why the hell is it doing that oh am I going to unswirl it if you don't put it back down in the same way sometimes it unswirls There must be something because that's getting darker and darker. That's so weird. And I just wiped it off twice. <laughs> Oblong shape. Okay. Let me clean that off again. I don't know why it's doing it. Doing it. I don't know why, but it is. Let's flatten it out. I mean, I just used a backing the other day on a piece. Oh, on the ones that burnt. I was so upset by that. It really sucked. I don't know if I've released that video yet or not. I had a video where I did a couple pendants and they freaking didn't realize that I set my temperature and I changed my temperature and it fried them and they turned into plastic charcoal I mean nothing's coming off so why is it doing that it's kind of odd oh I wonder if that's a piece of metal foil under there no that's too dark let's see if he'll do it again <clears throat> I wonder if it's something about this block I don't know hmm. anyways I think I've swirled enough so usually I'll round it back up so I can see a part I like especially when I've swirled multiple times and I want to try to pick the cleanest part as well, but you can always wipe it off with alcohol. I feel like that's down in there. Let's do that part. So flatten it off, just to get it kind of flat. And take your roller, and we'll roll it out a little bit. I do this all the time when I have scraps. I'll just take a scrap color and it may crackle a little bit. That's okay. It's the whole fun of these is like you really don't know what you're going to get. Ooh, that's cool. Then I'll run this through the machine and I'll save that to fit. That side got a little thin. That side's good. And I'll put it in a sheet protector. And I have, I just, like I said, I just used one, but I have all of these ones from a while back. These are Pardo. I got a little one there. I got that one there. So I have all kinds of them that I save. And when I need um, a backing, I got one. So I just cut the sheet protector. And I'll put that in there. For someday. There's another one from when we made that brown veneer. 
that I rolled through the pasta machine. It kind of made a heart on that side. I keep all those. Wow, this bar is yellow I made a long time ago. I totally forgot about that. I should actually use that. That one's pretty right there. I may use that one at some point. But I just keep all of these. So drilling the hole is where I'm worried about this separating from the metal leaf. But we'll try it. So I'm going to start right at the top where I think the center is. And it's easier if it's face down. Again, I've showed you my pin drill many times. I start with the smallest bit. You just untwist this to open it. The base spins so you can spin it in your fingers. It's easier if you're down on a tile working. Please check out my old videos because I do go in more detail when I was, you know, in the beginning videos and less now. So it didn't separate it so far, so that's good. I did get really close to that end. Hmm. I'm not very centered. Yeah, see? That's what I was worried about. That's what I was worried about. Look how not centered I just did that. It is separating. Hmm. Let's see, that's what I was worried about, so that's why I was like, do we use the metal leaf, do we not use the metal leaf? Now, if I would have put a... I'm going to try to push my hole over a little bit. If we would have put a siding on it, it could have helped. Also, if we could have... Um, if I would have resin the sides, that also would have helped. I'm trying not to fall in the hole I've already made off center. I'm just trying to make it a little bigger. If I push it this way more, maybe I can get it to go a little bigger. We'll see. I'll wear it and see what happens. That's not way too off center the bigger I get. Oh, I didn't do my other one. The other one, I already did this small hole. It did not separate. That's what I was worried about with the foil is sometimes the foil will stick to the clay itself, but clay doesn't stick to foil super, super well. So again, if we would have put a siding on, it would have helped um, or resin the sides. It might have helped hold it in one piece. But I would do something else if you're going to plan on that. Or just put a couple pieces. Can you see it right there? Just put a couple of pieces of um, foil on and not all over the whole thing. We'll see because maybe the foil, if it peels off the back clay, maybe it will all be stuck under here. Like I don't want to just pull it off just to see. But it may still be okay under there. Like it might be stick to the resin and veneer side and the pearl clay pulls off. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to see if it comes apart. I mean, it's separating a little bit at the top, but it's not separating down the bottom yet. So I don't know. Yeah, right there at the top just did. A little bit but I'm just wearing it so I think it'll be fine but I definitely wouldn't do a whole sheet of foil and then clay on top of it I don't know. without trying to secure it a little better maybe it'll bake and bond in there you'd have to experiment and see what you got to do let me put some jump rings on these and I'll string them and I'll show you you know, I, I think the big thing is, is people don't watch the videos until the end. I can see how many people and where they stop watching. And that's a big thing. You're going to miss that. I would have just totally told you, hey, go about this a different way. And you would have just missed it. So anyways, there's that one.
just on a plain leather cord. And this is how I wear them every day. I don't like to make necklaces for them. Yes, you could take it off by taking off the jump ring, but if I just want a simple necklace, I'll just wear it on a simple necklace. I don't want to add beads and stuff because then I'm stuck with that. And not every day do I want that at work. So I usually just wear a plain pendant. So there's this one, very springtime. Again, very simple back. I'll wear it and I'll see what it does. It only separated at the tip. It didn't separate down here. So it may be fine. The jump ring's gonna hold it together and it's not like I'm pulling on it to come apart. So it may be fine for a few years, but if you're gonna sell pieces like that, definitely go about that a different way. And then here's the darker colored one. You know, so I like it. I think they're fun. Super fun. Any translucent canes you want to come up with, pretty much, you can stick them on. So, you know, you can do translucent color. You don't need to do just white, black, whatever. Leaves. All kinds of things in there. So anyways, there's those two pendants, and um, I hope it gave you some inspiration, and definitely I wouldn't do a full sheet of foil, even like if you just took a little foil and put it here or there, you know, and then left some raw clay, I think that would look better, or work better. I think you definitely can see the foils down in there, that they are foils, um, you know, down in here. In real life, you can. Camera doesn't get it so much, but even like right above my finger... When I just tilt it a little bit, you get that little shimmer. So anyways, there they are.